What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and InScape tutorial for you. So in this video, I wanna talk about how to add scratches to your floors using imperfection maps in InScape. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this video is a little bit, um, I don't know if experimental is the right word, but I wanna be able on this channel to make videos about different concepts and trying different things to achieve different effects. And so as a part of that, what I've been doing is I've been fooling around with InScape and the idea of making your floors look a little more scratched up, so a little bit more realistic. And so in order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply what's known as an imperfection map. And uh, this is a little outside of what I've seen done with InScape before, so if you guys have any advice or anything like that, feel free to leave a comment down below um, if there's a different way that you would do this. All right, so to start off, if I run a render in InScape right now, if I click the play button, um, this is a model I've downloaded from the 3D Warehouse, by the way, it's the uh, Mason Contemporane by SC Kristoff. I will link to it in the notes below. Um, but if I bring this over into InScape right now, and uh, you look at your render, you can see how this has a pretty decent looking floor. I've got the sun set up coming through the window. I haven't done a whole lot of material setup on this yet, but you can see how I have all of my different floor stuff going on in here. Uh, the render looks perfectly fine, um, maybe a little, uh, it's it's lacking some reflections and stuff like that, but you can see how the flooring material, um, it's just a texture that I've brought in. I actually brought that one in from polygon.com, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a second, because that's where we're going to get our imperfection map. And so if you look at this material, this is just an image applied to this floor, and so what we're going to do is we're going to start setting this material up. And so I'm going to switch this over into dual screen recording, so you can see what's happening on my InScape screen as well as on my SketchUp screen. So if you look in InScape right now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to edit this floor material so we're going to select the material inside of SketchUp and we're going to go in and we're going to click on InScape materials and so this will pull up the InScape materials window and so in the InScape materials window what you can do is you can adjust different things about this material so if it was water or something like that or grass you can see how I could click on the grass button in order to make this look like a carpet in this case we're going to leave it on generic and so what the first thing I want to do is I want to add a bump map and there's so there's two different ways to do this because when I downloaded this texture it did come with a normal map it didn't come with an actual bump map but I actually find that the uh, texture mapping from inside InScape looks a little bit better and so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on this button for use albedo and so when we click on the button for use albedo what that's gonna do is that's gonna use the texture itself to create kind of a bump map on the floor. So you can see how when I kind of zoom in on this on the right hand side of my screen, this bump map is making my floor look bumpy. And a good way to kind of see how pronounced this this uh, effect is, because it's a little hard to tell with the image applied to it, is if you drag this image fade button all the way to the left, then it doesn't show the image anymore. And you can actually see how pronounced the bumps and everything else are inside of InScape. And so you can adjust this either by adjusting the amount by drag dragging this up and down so you can see as I drag this to the right, these bumps become a lot more pronounced. And so you can kind of adjust your settings in that way. And so we've got our bump map applied, so our floor looks a little bit more realistic. Um, you can see how it's just got a little bit more of a bump to it. It just gives it that little extra pop. But what I wanted to do in this case is I actually wanted to... What I've been fooling around with is the idea of using a... Uh, imperfection map in the roughness section in order to make these floors look a little bit more scratched. And so the way that that works is polygon.com and some other websites as well have these maps called imperfection maps. And basically what they are is they're images where you can um, overlay them on your materials to create different effects. You can create like fingerprint smudges or scratches or things like that. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to... Uh, I'm gonna to try to apply one of these over top of my material in InScape. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna click the plus button and I'm gonna go into a folder. And in this case, I've downloaded an image called Scratches Mixed 03. And so I'm gonna go find that. And if you look at your Scratches Mixed 03, if you open that, you can see how that's an image with some lights and darks that kind of indicate scratches. So this is something that InScape can read as a part of the roughness map. So if I double click on this, it's gonna load in my scratches 
as a reflection map inside of Enscape. Well, what that means is that's going to affect the way that the light reflects off of my floor. And so if you look at this, you can see how now my floor looks like it has a number of scratches on it. And so one thing I don't necessarily like about this is it over here you can see how basically what this is doing is this is making my floor look glossy where there aren't scratches. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this map and we're just going to go over and we're going to click the button for inverted. And so when we invert this you can see how you're getting a lot more reflection off of the floor area and less where those scratches are. But you can see how it's affecting the way that the light reflects off of this floor and it gives you kind of a scratched slightly more realistic look in here and so one thing you may notice is this is very glossy and so what we can do is we can go in here and we can actually turn down the brightness of our roughness map and you can see how when we turn down the brightness of our roughness map we're not getting as much reflection off of that floor so depending on how much gloss you want on the floor you can go in and you can adjust this until you kind of get the look that you're looking for And so what this does is this gives you the ability to add things like these scratches inside your models to make everything look just a little bit more lived in. Now there might be some things that you'd want to do. You might want to create just like a single patch of a material somewhere with the scratches instead of having it across the whole floor because it starts looking kind of repetitive. But um, I, I still think that it just adds something to this render when you're able to do this. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Is this something you'd like to try? Is there a better way to do this that you know of? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. Um, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.